Good afternoon, everyone. I want to help you um, be here today and uh, have a successful day. I want to tell you about the employment with uh, for people with cognitive disabilities. I am Marcela Bordon. I am from Paraguay. I am a lawyer. And since uh, I've been living in Chile for uh, three years, I am a I have a master's degree in political science, and from last year, I have been working as an analyst of strategic projects in the Scudema Foundation. I am a 30-year-old woman. I have uh, black hair. I am wearing a, a white, whitish shirt, and I wear sunglasses. I have the background from Fundación Descubreme. It's a blue background with the logo of the foundation. I would like to talk to you about the organization that I represent and the work that we are doing. As I said before, I am an analyst of uh, projects from the Descubreme Foundation. This is a Chilean foundation that was funded in 2010. It is a foundation that wants to promote the inclusion of people with cognitive disabilities in all of the areas of human development, but with an, a special approach on employment and education. From 2010, Zero Project and Fundación Descubreme have joined efforts to expand in a collaborative way and share and promote innovative solutions for disabilities in Latin America and in the Spanish speaking community. As part of the uh, work group for Zero Project in Latin America, we got the mission to be together with the online uh, community created by Zero Project. This is a um, project that was created for uh, addressing the impact on things that are related to this aspect. I am thankful to be here as a collaborator of this team that is focused on the opportunities of employment with people, uh, for people with disabilities. So along with the participation of the members of the community, of this emerging community, we have defined an introductory section, session to find and to show the different perspectives that can be adopted in terms of the adoption of uh, employment for people with disabilities. So before introducing everyone, everybody today, I want to give you a brief introduction about the people, um, about the situation of work uh, for people with disabilities in the world. People with cognitive uh, disability represent a small group of the population with people with disability, of people with disabilities in the world. There are about 1% of the world population. However, we think that this figure could be underestimated. Attending certain uh, criteria of uh, information and uniformity that we have in the different countries. We also know that the people with all types of disabilities have more probabilities for being uh, stigmatized and discriminated than the peers without disabilities. But they can be the last ones in the community to receive attention and care. For example, you can find lack of access to education and this uh, difficult the access to education to uh, access uh, decent employment as adults. However, the investigation and international experience, some of which we're going to be hearing about today, have shown that people with cognitive disabilities can access and can remain in the world, in the world uh, aspect and make contributions, significant contributions in the workplace when they are given opportunities and support for them to be able to learn and work better. People with disabilities can need support to make informed decisions about their professional options and also having uh, resources to be successful in the community employment. They can also need different degrees of support to achieve their personal objectives and increase their satisfaction. These objectives tend to include employment in the community along with people without disabilities and the obtention of competitive salaries. The importance of inclusive employment is not just based on closing a gap of access, which is of course important, but also in the role of employment in the life of people with disabilities. 
for many people, employment could give a sense of purpose, of self-esteem, for example, in their lives. The work can also improve the social economical aspects of the people, and this may allow many people to get out of poverty. For many, employment can also be an entry point for autonomy. So what could some challenges be to guarantee opportunities of people with uh, disabilities in, in, in the workplace? First of all, I think that we should offer education opportunities and then finish uh, secondary education, university education and vocational training that can allow people to acquire knowledge and to develop the skills that are necessary to obtain better employment. In the second place, once they're inside, they're inside the workplace, we should offer continuous uh, training so that they can develop their career and also guaranteeing salaries and benefits that are fair and reasonable. This goes hand by hand with uh, the opportunities that we should provide for employment for those countries that have low incomes mainly. And we should also give everyone the opportunity to explore new uh, horizons once in a while and not just put one person in di with disabilities with just one option forever when actually personal growth is also related to looking for new opportunities. And we should also offer opportunities to work and to increase salary without losing the right of the public uh, aspects. These are some of the challenges that we see today. And I think that everybody agrees when I say that it is practically impossible to solve all of this by ourselves. So with this in mind, I would like to go to our session. All of the presentations that you're going to be hearing today are focused on how collaboration and articulation are very important to achieve inclusion. I think that all of the sectors, public, private, and civil society are inter interdependent and they need one, each other, one another to be able to help people with, uh, with uh, disabilities. A continuación, paso a presentar a, a, a los primeros eh, panelistas de esta sesión. Now I will give the floor to the first panelists of the session. They are from Ability and Work Foundation. They are going to be with us today. We are going to hear, first of all, Marian Hennessy. She is the coordinator and the creator of Ability at Work. She is a specialist in uh, employment with uh, support for more than 30 years. She was a director of the Ireland of the Association for Employment with Support from Ireland from 2009 to 2017. Along with her uh, organization, they introduced the initiative of the National Day of uh, the National Job Day. This concept is going to be better known today uh, in the presentation that uh, they are going to give us. And they say that this is an opportunity, this new concept is an opportunity so that the new companies and the new employers can recognize the opportunity that it has to recognize the uh, different skills of people. They work with national, multinational companies to be able to uh, overcome barriers for people with disabilities. Along with Marianne, we also have Jamie Murray from Ability at Work. He is a 24-year-old young man with a cognitive disability, according to um, what he says, he, he, or what they say, he has a natural gift for people to see things from a point of view that is not uh, conflictive. He's passionate uh, for uh, receiving the same treatment as others and be seen as the rest of the people. He uh, likes to talk about all of these things that uh, make people with disabilities stigmatize and overcome them. He is an advocate for the rights of the people with uh, disabilities, with uh, cognitive disabilities. So thank you very much, Marianne and Jamie. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. 
thank you, Zero Project, very much for inviting me to speak with you today at this conference. My presentation consists of an introduction to our program, explaining what Ability of Work is all about, and then I will share some strategies that work for us, engaging with the public and the private sector, and how we believe we are truly person-centred. Then you'll have an opportunity to meet a wonderful young man, Jamie Murray, to talk about his experiences as a young man with an intellectual disability. We will finish with a short video at the end. Ability of Work is a specialised supported employment service in Ireland, bringing young people with intellectual disabilities and autism closer to the labour market. This programme assists job seekers to overcome the barriers they face every day when they try to find a job of their own. We developed this service because our job seekers ask for the help to support them to find work where they feel valued, equal and included in the workforce. Next slide, please. Ability of Work commenced in 2018. Our aim is to connect employers and skilled people with different abilities who want to work. We assist companies to become more inclusive when recruiting staff, and we create positive opportunities through sustainable employment. We use the five-stage model of support employment to enable the person to find and maintain a job with the support of a job coach. Next slide, please. Our programme supports people to find and maintain employment with the support of a job coach. The job coach and the job seeker sets goals and identifies career choices. We do this by providing one-to-one -one sessions to develop a vocational profile, to develop job search and interview skills. We pro provide access to training and upskilling and opportunities to gain qualifications. We also provide ongoing support when a job is achieved. Next slide, please. In Ireland, 600,000 people have disabilities. That is 13% of the population. Of this, 160,000 people have an intellectual disability. Our unemployment rate in Ireland is unacceptably high at 76.6%. That's 6% above the European average. It works out that it's almost 80% if you are a non-graduate, and it's even higher if you've got a dual diagnosis or you have additional uh, disabilities. Next slide, please. So on our program, and the profile of our participant is that they're aged between 18 and 29 years. Now, this was the funding criteria set out by the European Social Fund. We have an ex and a zero exclusion policy. So this means that it doesn't matter what type of disability you have, um, you can access our program once you're motivated to work and we can provide the correct supports to, to help you. We are very person-centered, all the work we do, and um, we review our work regularly and we record our results. We are accountable to the goals and the timeframes we set with the job seeker. Next slide, please. Inability at work, we've always endeavored to put the participant at the heart of our program. After year one, we gave our participants the opportunity to evaluate the program. This gave us an insight into how the participants viewed their own service. We listened to their feedback and changed our approach. We found three key learnings. Our participants wanted to be referred to as people with different abilities. They want to have more say in how the program is run and delivered, and they actively want to campaign for change and to break down the barriers they experience um, in life and um, in, in employment. And they've run a very successful campaign called um, Nothing About Us Without Us. And we'll tell you a little bit later on, Jamie will speak to you about the Ability Board. Uh, next slide, please. In 2020, um, we also, in, sorry, we also network with companies. We advise employers how to become more inclusive in the recruitment practices. Um, we help develop partnerships with employers and we develop interesting employment projects trying to promote our program. We organize work placements, internships, and we run a job shadow initiative day um, to open the doors to employment with companies. Um, wherever possible, we try to employ, in, identify employment opportunities. We also provide disability awareness training um, and secure paid employment. Next slide, please. 
So our achievements in 2020, we were honored to win a national award in Ireland from Incas, recognizing our work in support and employment. In 2021, we were delighted to receive the international award from the Zero Project for our best practice in support and employment. Next slide, please. So for our program outcomes, we have supported 75 people over the last three years on our program. To date, 62 people now have achieved paid employment. All of the participants on the program have received work preparation training and 85% have gained qualifications and moved closer to the labour market. Funding continues to be sporadic and unstable. And unfortunately, we do not receive direct sustainable funding from the government. We recently um, were fortunate to secure funding until December 2022. However, we do have to fundraise um, for necessary funds to continue with our programme. Next slide, please. And um, we have built strong um, partnerships and friendships with businesses, and we look for every opportunity to build relationships with large business groups. For example, we build relationships with the hospitality and the public sector, the arts, different business associations. We also get involved in events and festivals to get our project known out there and to make links with key people in business. Um, thank you for my part of this um, presentation. I now want to tell you about the next member um, who's going to speak, and that is Jamie Murray from our Ability Board. Um, the Ability Board is a board of management made up entirely of the people we support, and they are the monitoring group over our program. They're included all decisions related to ability at work. And in the interest of democracy, we held an election campaign where candidates on the program put themselves forward for selection. We were blown away by the powerful speeches as they explained their discrimination that they face every day in their lives. I'd like now to hand you over to Jamie um, for his presentation. So a bit like people, what we are all about. Let me tell you what we are about. We are an advocacy group who fight for the rights of people with international disability in employment. We describe ourselves as the voice for the voiceless. We want to have ability at work with everything they do to make sure they are as inclusive and diversity as possible. More of a plan. We are in the perception of setting, setting ourselves up as a social in, enterprise, giving disability awareness training to company and sitting in on the interview panels. to will make Irish company more inclusive and diversity. We we also want to create easy to read documents so that information is accessible to everyone. We were paid to take part in Social Impact Ireland Business for 21 Interpact. Social Impact Spring Incubator Program 2021. All the members in the ability at work decided that we wanted to be more involved in the running of a program. We did say to hold an election to shoot a president, a vice president, and a chairperson of the ability board. We all went on a campaign. Chill to get a place on the board. We made poster and speeches to show our passion and commitment to the rights of people with international disability. Here are some campaign photos. In March 2020, we held the official election 
everyone turned up to cats a full. Lots of people came on the day to support her too. It was like a real election. I feel like it's uh, important to give people with disability a say in their own lives. Here we are waiting to get the result of the vote. Here are the president, the vice president, and the chairperson we elected. We have now expanded to include seven more committee members. Not in a book of without us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marion and Jamie, for presenting about the work you are performing, particularly for such inspiring testimonies, both from the team leading the project and testimonies such as Jamie's about how to conduct this, how you conducted this work in your communities. Now we'll introduce Sally Bowden, who comes from the Living Link, and he'll present us his project from South Africa. He's the general manager of the company. Well, he'll tell us in this presentation about how he approached this first when with a few friends in Johannesburg, they approached the community and performed some activities with the residents, barbecues or volleyball games or cricket. And with this link the, with the community, this became tighter with when in 2010, the owners of this company wanted to close the residence. So Stanley came up with the initiative with the business model, making something much more sustainable in time out of this. So Stanley was in charge, uh, took the lead of the company and in 2016, he opened a second residence 
in Cape Town, a very interesting project that will be <laughs> very interested in listening about. So Stanley, we give the floor to you now. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you find yourselves around the world. Uh, Marcella, thanks for the introduction. As Marcella said, my name is Stanley Borden. I'm the Managing Director of The Living Link. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the Zero Project for giving me the opportunity to present. Um, we have been recognized by Zero Project before in 2016, 2017, and 2018 as an innovative practice. Um, and we've been uh, in 2020 last year, we uh, were recognized as a, as a partner of the Zero Project. Um, in terms of uh, uh, giving you a background around the Living Link and uh, what we do. Uh, I think it's really important to understand where the Living Link came from because when you have a child who has a cognitive disability, I think you find yourself very alone in the world, not knowing what to do. And the Living Link was started by a mother and daughter team back in 2000. Uh, the mom's name is Ingrid, the daughter without the disability, um, uh, uh, her name uh, is, and I've just gone blank because I'm doing this presentation. <laughs> anyway, Nadine has a, um, the, the, the intellectual disability. And uh, Nadine went through all the special uh, uh, schooling system uh, that was offered in South Africa at that time. And when she finished school, uh, Julia, who's her sister, um, and her mom, Ingrid, asked the question, well, what are we going to do with Nadine now? And uh, they started writing articles to the local newspapers uh, and the local publications, and nobody came back with an answer. So they sat down and they said, well, why don't we try and see if we can't get Nadine to a position where she's living independently, where she's not hanging around at home doing nothing, where she actually is out in society, where she's participating, she's giving back, uh, and uh, she's enjoying a, a, an independent life. Anyway, they, they put this uh, short training program together. It uh, took about three months to get Nadine to a stage where they could take her to a flat uh, with four other people with different kinds of disabilities and were, uh, uh, um, allowed them to live independently and they dropped Nadine off. However, the question was then asked, well, how do you pay rent? How do you buy electricity? How do you buy food? Because uh, Julia and Ingrid couldn't continuously supply those types of things. So it was decided that Nadine needed to be upskilled so that she could ultimately enter the workplace. And that's what they did. They put another training program together, which uh, uh, was a six month training program. And um, they found her a job, uh, an entry level job doing basic admin work. And that's where the Living Link started because what they did, they then went out to their network and they said to their network, well, we have developed this project, would you, um, like us to train your young adults who have intellectual disabilities and of course the demand was huge. Now, uh, in order to understand how we get to the world of employment, uh, it's very important to understand what we do to get there. So we run a one year life skills and work readiness training program. Um, we have five intakes per year at the Living Link Training Center, which is based on the same property as the Living Link Village where we have independent living residents who have gone through the program, who have worked, who have the ability to pay the rent, buy the electricity, uh, um, uh, and buy their food and pay for transport to from work. Um, the training, uh, as I said, is is very is 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 um, focused on life skills with a, an overarching focus on uh, work readiness because you can't get to the the point of living independently unless you could, you you have work. So we focus on getting the young adults that come through the Living Link ready to enter that workplace. We like to call it either work hardening or work fitness. And I guess that is what makes us very, very unique out in the open labor market because a lot of people with disabilities uh, in South Africa specifically don't have the opportunity to go to a place like the Living Link where you are ready for the workplace. Um, and unfortunately, what happens is a lot of uh, people with disabilities do enter that workspace and then uh, they fail because they don't know what's required of them in terms of uh, understanding performance, in terms of understanding communication, being a team player, etc. And the employer doesn't understand a person with a disability, so can't put the reasonable accommodation in place 
to ensure that that individual can be supported, can develop, can grow, uh, and can climb the ladder within the organization where they're placed. So we have a very unique model that uh, we, we, we utilize. We, we're not just a, um, a seagull type organization where we drop and go. We embed ourselves in the organizations where our young adults become employed. We negotiate real work for fair pay um, and uh, contracts that protect the rights of the intellectually disabled young adults that are employed in those environments. Um, we offer a job coaching service to the employer, to the employee, because nobody stands alone in this relationship. It's not your typical employer-employee relationship when you're dealing with a person with disability. It is a, 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 a relationship that is closely linked so that all parties understand what the deliverables are, all parties understand how to support each other. Um, so that makes us very unique because as I say, both sides have, have the ability to make contact with the Living Link so that we can provide that support in terms of the job coaching. Um, in terms of the types of employment that we find in South Africa, we are a developing country. Unfortunately, we have a very, very high unemployment rate. Um, and as uh, a previous speaker has alluded to, people with disabilities are overlooked. Uh, they are considered uh, um, unable to be employed and uh, they, they find themselves marginalized. And this can't be further from the truth. So once the training, the, the year's training has been completed at the Living Link, we, we then uh, move the young adults into what we call second phase of membership. And that's where we start seeking out employment for them. And in South Africa, as I said, because of the high employment rate, we've got to be quite creative. So we need to understand all the types of opportunities that we can open up for our young adults. Uh, we operate in the private sector. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a lot of people working in, in the public sector because the public sector in South Africa doesn't know how to embrace people with disabilities and to bring them on board. And, and because uh, government and the, pub, uh, the public sector is so cash strapped, they can't provide the reasonable accommodation in terms of the job coaching that goes to support the young adults to ensure their success. So different types of contracts that we negotiate with the employers out there, um, it's permanent contracts where you have no end uh, in terms of the contract. Uh, we have short and long-term contracts where there's specified work. Our young adults get placed in those positions. They go then, perform, go, go then into those environments. They perform the tasks and the work that's required. Um, and then they exit at the end of it. Learnerships where they go into a work a work slash training environment um, and they are paid for that. We also uh, have volunteering environments where uh, young adults can go into uh, um, volunteering at uh, uh, animal shelters, um, vets, other places. And sometimes we find that they actually get employed. And then we have our own unique gap skills development program. That is where we get money from sponsors who tell us that we have to allocate the money to um, our, our graduated students. And what we do is we break down that money and uh, we then find them temporary work while we continue to uh, seek full-time employment for them because we don't want them to be sitting at home. In terms of the characteristics of the, the work that we seek out, it's entry level, it's fairly repetitive, uh, uh, and not typically to the point where somebody is only doing one thing. We limit frontline exposure in terms of having our, um, our, our graduates, our, our, our people that we place working on um, switchboards, working in uh, call centers and that kind of thing where there's heavy customer contact where customers can get ugly. Um, we like to have uh, um, structured uh, systems in place for our uh, young adults because when, they, when, when an environment is structured, it gives the young adults confidence because they know what to do on a daily basis. We take away the time pressures that are associated with work um, to ensure that uh, that, that pressurized environment uh, is reduced. And then just some work examples. We are not limited in terms of the industries uh, where we go to. Uh, we are in merchandising, in retail, data capturing, warehousing, garden services, childcare assistance, and many, many more. And I guess for us, what we are trying to do is, the main thing is, is to get 
people from previously disadvantaged environments, we want to get them employ into employment so we can uplift them out of poverty, give them an opportunity to improve their lives and the lives of those around them, get them to a stage where they can be financially independent, they can live independently, they can add value in society, they can um, stop being a draw on uh, the, the, the um, social grant system and they can be seen as any other type of person out in society. And then this is just a, a collage of some of the people that uh, have come through um, because we're a very, um, uh, we're a very mixed society, if I can use that. Um, we, we, we have some very interesting people and we have some very interesting jobs that go, go uh, with those people. And just interestingly enough, in terms of the training that we do, we cater for 18 to 35 year olds. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for the opportunity and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much, Stanley, for your presentation. This has Now we're going to go to uh, America. We are going to hear Elena Gomez. She's the coordinator from uh, inclusion and she has a lot of experience in project execution in uh, research. She has uh, uh, emphasis on the context of uh, disabilities. She has experience as a university professor, uh, management of projects and also experience in the private and the uh, public sector. So Eliana, thank you very much for being here with us and we would like to hear about the work that you're doing. Thank you. the presentation. So, uh, hi everybody. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon. So, as Manuel said, my name is Eliana Gomez from Colombia, specifically from Medellin, and I represent a Crear Unidos Corporation. Uh, as to translate it, in case it's needed, it's just to say, like, uh, creating together, creating united, and that's the reason why I call this presentation United for Opportunities. Uh, we used to uh, play a lot with this word uh, United as it's part of our name, of our name, and it's very important for us to, to um, make it stronger to the to magnify the meaning of a uh, work together, right? Of be united. Okay, so to start just to um, make a little or tell you a little bit of the history of uh, Crear Unidos. So it, um, it was built or it started to work in 2003. So we've been working 18 years uh, specifically with youth and adults with uh, learning disabilities or cognitive disabilities. Um, and to say 18 years ago and think about a context like Colombia, was to think in like a very uh, a slow and uh, a lot, and to talk about a lot of discrimination, a lack of opportunities for people with disabilities. Maybe it's a very different context to think about 18 years ago in some places like North America, like Europe. So for by that time, uh, 18 years ago, it was only talk about create further education, occupational activities, try to keep their physical and mental health uh, as better as possible. But in the mind of our director, uh, it was always uh, the belief in their opportunities, the belief of that they can uh, put into practice all their capacities and all their passion and willing uh, for work. So by the time people and companies used to say and used to tell her, you are not, they cannot work, uh, they are very, I'm not gonna focus in all the difficulties that people used to have in their minds, but the chance, but yeah, just to say uh, that in Colombia, they used to believe that we were not because we believe that people with uh, cognitive disabilities can work. But uh, at the end of the day, and it had, after like 10 years later, employment did arrive. And uh, uh, one of the um, companies that believe in that was a supermarket, a supermarket that was um, like promoting and helping through donations, uh, the corporation, but they also 
gave our users the chance uh, to work, to start putting to practice the things that they were uh, learning in, in the educational part and be part of their supermarket it, with the first role that was as a packer. Maybe not in all the countries uh, that you, you belong, uh, this role is still into the market as a, to be a packer. Usually in a lot of places, it's, uh, the cashier is the same person that packs or you as, as a client, you pack yourself. But in Colombia, it's still a quite an important role because you, in certain places, you expect that somebody helps you to pack. So right is still, we have some of our users that work as a packer, but what happened? So with this chance, what Clarine made was to, to make a technique, an educational technique for this uh, role. But what happened uh, next that the users start asking like, but I don't want to be a packer. There's nothing wrong about it, but I want to do something else. I have more abilities. I have more capacities. So by the time a group of other organizations were uh, building an alliance to work towards support employment. So we start working towards that. And by that time, the expression or the concept, the model uh, person center planning was not yet uh, like in, in our context, at least, at least it, it wasn't in Colombia, but it was in the mind of our director and the teachers by the time that, okay, users are asking for another chances, uh, different uh, roles, different uh, things to learn and to put into practice. So we need to think about what they want and we need to listen to them. So um, to explain this, I'm just gonna tell you this story about the guy in the middle, Julian. Uh, is a guy that was that he's very uh, function to just say like a common expression regarding his abilities. He has a lot of capacities, a lot of abilities, and for instance, he had the chance to work as a partner a lot of years ago, but he didn't want it that. He wanted to be, um, I think the word is amateurs, like to do massages to people. He belongs from a family that uh, works into the like health and um well-being uh, context so he wanted to become um um yeah um, uh, to give massages so we uh, support them first uh, studying the proper uh, education the proper program to become a masseuse and then we keep supporting him to find the correct road we knock into a lot of companies we knock into a lot of places to find him the proper job and there is this company that imports liquor into Colombia and they have the administrative area. And Julian is nowadays the person in charge of the um, active houses. So that includes gives massages to his uh, colleagues and also to as his um, uh, an, an foreman, he, he, he uh, plays taekwondo, he practices taekwondo and he's really good at that. He also uh, teach his colleagues um, how to do some stress during the active process. So as his story, some others of people that we support them to find their role and to do um, or to achieve their project life regarding work. So in these recent days, we try to link our goals uh, related to the SDGs. So this is very important for us in, uh, nowadays. Um, so obviously, the, the, the center of, of our goals are based in the number 10, reducing equalities, but obviously we also touch or impact number four, quality, quality education, number eight, decent work and economic growth. And uh, regarding this space, this event that is very important, number 17, partnerships for the goals, to achieve the goals. So all the things that are going on today, that is, try to promote partnerships, to work together. Uh, we just wanted to share a very important, some of our best partnerships or alliances. One is uh, with a university, that is Universidad of Antioquia, is one of the um, most important public universities in Colombia. And uh, this university has an inclusive program for intellectual 
the people with intellectual disabilities. And some of their students are doing for, uh, their internships in our place that I'm going to introduce next. And Ampans is an, a foundation from Barcelona in Spain that gave us um, like a, a knowledge um, exchange uh, regarding residential programs. And they also help us to think in one of our biggest uh, programs right now regarding employment that is Crear Unidos Cafe. You can find it in, in social networks like this, at Crear Unidos Cafe, in Instagram and Facebook. And basically, uh, this program is very important because the rest of our users that haven't had the chance yet to get employed in the open market, we had the feeling that they still need to improve their skills for work and we need to give them more, but we need to give them the real opportunity, the real chance to work. And the cafe is the perfect experience because we try to manage as an open organization full of customers that are delighted with our work cafe, that are delighted with our customers their customer service. So we, I really want to invite you to get to know this cafe. Some of our impact, uh, so we have 20 students in job training at Stocker Skills, um, nine employment um, in the open market, in different organizations, four different employments at the, at the cafe, six interns at the cafe, uh, 10 open market companies that received a uh, take home conscious training, training that is very important to be part of workshops to understand the concept of disability and inclusion and hundreds of daily customers with a change in mind opportunity when they come to the cafe. And so which are our challenges to remain the cafe as an open market organization to keep our sustainability beyond, beyond to be an NGO, transit the employees or interns to a new open market opportunities. We don't want to keep them in the cafe. We want to promote them to the open market, obviously. And the community demands for more coffee shops. And so we really expect to have more places and to give the chance to more people to uh, get trained and to have a, a work opportunity there. So, gracias. Thank you, Eliana, for your presentation and for the work that you are performing. I believe that for Latin America, this is quite an example. And it's good to know this type of promotion that you're giving people with disabilities in Colombia in these areas of work that you are promoting right now, particularly. And now we'll introduce Victor Martinez with the Joe Clementes Institute in Brazil. He's a supervisor of the Service of Inclusion and um, tenure, labor tenure in Brazil. He's a teacher and a psychoanalyst with studies, with postgraduate studies in inclusion with also a master's in education for employment. We are very grateful to have him here participating in this panel. So now we give the floor to you so that you can tell us more about the work you are conducting in Brazil. Thank you so much for the inviting. I'm Victor. Instituto Jo Clemente. The subject today is very important for the organization work concept. Um, the Instituto Jo Clemente has been a national reference in the cause of intellectual disability for over 60 years, convinced of the potential of people with intellectual disabilities and the positive impacts of their social inclusion. We have development over two, six decades, nationally and internationally recognized services and practices based on the prevention and the promotion of health, social inclusion, defense and the guarantee of rights, and the production and dissemination and knowledge. The, we have um, four bases to full inclusion. The first base this is the prevention, the health needs, the um, the health and care in the people with disability need basis, specific basis for the development to evolution, the full potential. The other point 
other basis in this direction existence the people with the disability uh, was born to needing um, the assistance the specific assistance but next in, in the life is, ne is necessary for for a people with disability the stimulation and the habilitation uh, specific in a basis for the educational and the professional inclusion uh, is the the main thing the main thing for us the other points in the other important points in disease defense and the guarantee of rights the, the points the advocacy the social legal and the virus program the formation the articulation for the protection network and and bring for people with disability the, the necessary the security to development and the for, for the basis the, the other other point this is the generation and dissemination of knowledge like in like this like in the the conversation uh, it's important to dissemination the specific concepts uh, about the inclusion and in brazil the, the Brazil inclusion scenery uh, I, I think in to development and then two two decades before uh, today we have in 45 million people with disability uh, this the, the population the Argentina for example is, is less than the people with disability in Brazil and uh, 14 40 million people uh, receive the support uh, the government support and they specific the support to to accord the law inclusion of the people with disability uh, as the people with disability are, are those who have a long time physical mental intellectual or sensory impairment it's in the interaction if you want more barriers may obstruct their full participation and the effective in society on equal terms with other people. Uh, today, we have in, in Brazil um, 14, 4,000 4, people with disability uh, to work in the job, in the, in the formal job. But uh, it's necessary uh, to advance in the subject because uh, we have 90 million people with disability uh, with condition for the, the labor, for the, the work. But uh, we have in the advanced. And the specific professional inclusion, the people with disability, uh, based in the support and important uh, methodology, uh, help the people with disability uh, to development the the desire the um, when how the people with disability uh, want work the support and employment disseminated in, in Europe and the United States and, uh, we have take projects to, to to other states in the Brazil in the end of the world uh, bringing the the needs the needs basis uh, for the advice for companies and then other institutions we attend uh, in day by day. Um, this is qualification and inclusion of people with disability uh, and autism from the age of the 19 years um, and the 30 years, 40 years, uh, not to limit the desire as, as many many subjects for us and the the important number the important rate for us is the retention the people with disability and the and the job 19 uh, percent of permanency in employment the, the people with disability the inclusion for us um, and that the big number the the inclusion and then the main inclusion then the many people's uh, accessibility in the, in the labor market is very important, but it's very important too 
the people with disabilities permanency in, in the in the labor market with equality in the support. Uh, today we currently have 40 companies and public institutions advising to complete the, the cotton law and and to in 2021. Uh, more than 3,000 people, I'm sorry, more than three, three yes, 3,000 people with intellectual disability, including the labor market, since the, two, the 2013. It's a, it's a big number, but more important, this is the, the project of life, the, the people with disability advancing. In, in the society. And uh, about in, in the specific uh, role of the Brazilian and the public action, this is in the size uh, 1991, Brazil has a national law that obliges companies with uh, 100 or more employees to fill 2% to 5% of their positions with rehabilitation beneficiaries or people with disabilities especially in companies starting in two, uh, 20, 22, 11 years after the creation of the Coder Law. In the quantitative terms, the law is extremely effective in the year prior to the starting inspection. In 2001, there were um, 1,601 people with disabilities working throughout the state of Sao Paulo. Today, there are more than 30,000 people with disability, including the company, public institution, and in Sao Paulo. Uh, I believe the, the number to sh show us the, the very important this is the code law and then creating a specific basis to, to care the, the subjects the inclusion, the people with disability, in specific, the intellectual disability and the autism. This is, congratulations. Su presentación por contarnos un poco más acerca de lo que están realizando en Brasil. Y ahora me gustaría invitarlos a todos, especialmente a, a nuestros expositores. Hello oh, everyone, particularly thanks to our Speakers, uh, we invite you to have this panel and answer about your reality, the reality that you've had to face in the middle of this fight against discrimination and to have more open access and opportunities and to guide us. I will name you to answer. What have been the biggest challenges in the work that you have performed in relation to that change in the mindset that we need to perform? The change, how do we face these biggest challenges in the mindset of employers? Because this is not easy. They are sometimes very willing to change and better have better inclusion in their enterprises but they face certain fears or people are not open to see the added value that including collaborators with disabilities has and acknowledge their vast potential so i would like to start with marianne and jamie could you tell us about your experience uh, facing these challenges when meeting employers who need to broaden their minds and see the value that people with disabilities have? Yes, I suppose we um, experience the same difficulties as you've just mentioned there in Ireland. And, and I suppose over 25 years that I have worked and supported employment, it has, it's the same issues that come up every time um, with employers. Um, it doesn't matter whether there's a recession or a pandemic in there's definitely a fear with employers. First of all, they're not quite sure what to do. They don't know um, how to go about even recruiting a person with a disability. 
and I suppose the biggest issue for us really is their recruitment practices. They tend to have very set ideas and they use templates for advertisements and they have a kind of an unconscious bias of the people that they will, will hire. So if 10 people apply for a job and one person is in a wheelchair, it, it's very unusual that they would pick the person in the wheelchair. Um, so what we find going in and meeting companies is that we're constantly challenging attitudes and perceptions and I suppose the fears that employers have and the best way that we can actually challenge those ideas is by um, allowing them meet the people we support and by the people we support talk with them about their lived experience of what it feels like to be discriminated when you're applying for a job. And hearing from their heart, their lived experience of, you know, being excluded, being on the outside and not being included. Um, sometimes employers will talk about health and safety issues or, you know, it might be very expensive to put in additional accommodations. But, um, you know, I find it's through education, it's through our disability awareness training that we do with um, companies. And when we go in and ask them to give a person a chance, and when they see people working, that's when they truly um, accept and, and you know, are more open to employment. We're doing a lot of work through our social media in, in Cork, in Ireland, and um, trying to educate employers. And we're trying to get one company to recommend another company. Um, but, but it's difficult every day. And Jamie, would you like to say something there? Uh, the church, we learn to be open-minded with us because we are human, right? And everyone had equal opportunity, like, you took and be treated differently. Like, at the end of the day, we are human, right? And we all had have that same way. Exactamente. Ha sido es, es muy buena respuesta, Jamie. Exactly. That is a great uh, thing to say. That is very valuable for us too to listen to you saying this. It is important to know that you are uh, also collaborating. So your opinion is very valuable for us, more valuable than any of our opinions because. It is your testimony and it is yourself. You are the one that is changing people's minds. So thank you very much. And now I would like to know um, the opinion of Stanley about this topic. So Stanley, what can you tell us? Well, it's quite interesting because as Marion said, you know, when you enter the world of employment and you're trying to find people with disabilities work, uh, there's a natural fear that comes from that employer, especially if that employer has never been associated with somebody either close to them uh, from a family perspective or a friend perspective who has a disability. And, and that's a massive challenge because um, a lot of people believe that, that, as I said in my presentation, that people with disabilities don't have ability. Um, but what we find in terms of trying to change the mind of the employer to get a positive mindset is in our training uh, uh, that we do when our, our students are on worksite training, getting actual experience, we um, have uh, we develop reports uh, um, against their performance, um, and then we have what we call KPIs, um, which are key performance indicators. Our uh, uh, the the the, the worksite uh, supervisors that uh, host the students. They, at the end of uh, each site rotation, because our guys work at a site for uh, six weeks, six to eight weeks, and then they rotate through to another business, to another uh, type of work so that they can get multiple uh, pieces of work experience. Um, we take those KPIs and those work reports to the employer, and uh, we can then show the employer the competence of the individual coming into their environment. Um, on top of that, and we support the employer and the employee with a job coach. And that, that we find where you offer that service to the employer and, and you don't just let them feel like they're on their own. They tend to embrace the opportunity a lot more. Um, and uh, uh, once we've got the, the young adults 
into that world of employment, we then sensitize the staff. So we go in prior to the actual first day's work and we help the employer and his employees understand who the individual is that's coming into the environment. We give them an opportunity to ask questions against their own fears, to allay their fears, and to help them under understand how to best engage the young adult that's about to be employed. And then uh, we, we form this continuous uh, ring uh, uh, around the young adult um, and, and uh, uh, around the employer so that nobody feels alone at any stage. Uh, we've seen it a number of times where uh, in terms of the reasonable accommodation that gets applied to an intellectually disabled person, it's typically your uh, job coach. Um, where that job coaching hasn't been available, that's where there's failure in that environment. And it is not because of the, the person with the inter intellectual disability, it's because the, the, the employer alongside his employees don't know how to best support, interact, um, and communicate with the person with the, in with the intellectual disability. So we just find as long as you are talking to that employer and assuring that employer that they're not alone, that they, they, they have support, they have a backup, we tend to break down those barriers a whole lot easier. But it is still difficult, as I said when I started, if it is a, an employer that has never been associated with a person with a disability, you still have to work very, very hard. Totalmente. Necesitamos mucho esa cercanía. De repente las personas... Yes, que we need that closeness. Many times uh, people that have somebody with disability in our family, in our circle, are more open, but uh, regretfully seeing them as the valuable, enabled people that there are implies to take a leap. It's not just uh, they are there, but they actually can do something. They can do many things. And that is what we try to show from our foundation. We try to show society that they can and not just stay with uh, intentions, but move into action. Um, we would, would like to know about the Crear Unidos experience and uh, what you have been doing in Colombia. I imagine that what you're doing there is related to what we're doing in Latin America in terms of breaking this mental barriers of the employers, not just in your area, but also in other areas. So not just uh, having people with disabilities work in, in cafes, but also making them work in other places. In those, those things that they said, and also like setting by days that achieve that a company opens their doors to inclusion, to labor inclusion is quite a challenge. But beyond that, um, I want to focus when our users are already um, working in, in any kind of company. We try to get close to those companies that we know that they are quite open, they have some consciousness. So still, let's say that we, we have done the first step, right? So the biggest challenge after that is the overprotection. And I think that is very related to our culture, right? So our families, for instance, are very or, or are overprotective with uh, young and adults with learning disabilities. So uh, it, it happens the same at work. So it's sometimes the employer, let's say the owner, give the chance, open the door, but then are the, the rest of the worker, the, the rest of the employee, the, the ones in charge of carry on and work day by day with that person, right? So what happens when that person has the feeling that these young adults with learning disability needs a lot of help, needs a lot of support, don't allow them to take risks in work, obviously the natural risks to have a job, um, and start doing all the things for him or for her, right? So I think one of the biggest challenges is overprotection. Totalmente, Eliana. Y eso creo que trasciende un poco. Yes, I totally agree with you. And this transcends the cultures of all of our country. Many times, uh, the love for our families makes us all overprotect. 
uh, them and more maybe in a context where many of their families with members of their families with some type of disability, uh, cognitive disability, we feel afraid in terms of what the world could do to them, but we need to see the potential in them and accompany them. It's not just about inserting them, but it's also changing, uh, changing the way about we think about them, changing the paradigm. This is very important, something that we need to do in our society. So now I'd like to ask the same question to Victor. What do you think have been the main uh, obstacles in the change of awareness and the, in the change of mentality in Brazil? Yeah, the biggest challenge is the development of the environment in the people who receive the people with the intellectual disability in their workplace. In the conscientious aspects, we are working on aspects relating to existing rules in the environment, the delivery time of activities, and the need of productions. These conscientious aspects are difficult to overcome because they are related to the production of profit and delivery of the company, but with work, they can be solved. On the other end, they are unconscious aspects which have to do with the formation of the each person. There are even more laborious and usually need a long time to be resolved. The solution of prejudice that are in the formation of the each person need to be brought out and worked on during the inclusion process. For this reason, the support employment methodology is very important to overcome these barriers. The methodology, work step by step, one side, the developing the people with disability, other side, the environment. I believe uh, this is inclusion. Thank you very much, Victor, for that very interesting answer about the experience that you are developing. I think that uh, for those of us who are in the Southern Cone, we're also reflected in, in what you say. We look a lot um, to Brazil. You are a huge country and your reality is a little bit more complex than what we see. For example, I live in Paraguay and we're a very small country and the reality, uh, our reality is different depending on the size of our country. So. I want to thank you all for this great answers, for participating in this panel, for each one of your experiences, and also for making us see the value of generating these networks. The online community is open to all of the organizations of the world, not just the Spanish speaking or the English speaking ones, but for everyone. We are here to start uh, to getting to know this entrepreneurship and this innovations that are so good and how we can support each other in a more dynamic way, more than just seeing each other in conferences and in the Zero Project uh, conferences, but going beyond and turning into a community today with technology uh, that has been put into the test because of the pandemic we see that we are not uh, just, I mean, we don't only have to meet each other in conferences physically, oh, of course we want to, but we can meet more often through the networks online. We can work together um, with these platforms. So thank you very much. I want to invite you to keep enjoying these conferences and uh, there are very interesting panels, so we will be seeing you in the next presentations. Thank you very much, and see you soon.